Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts, and today we're visiting Mount Scrapmore again. Last week we organized our scraps. This week I'm going to show you how to use them. I'm going to show you my top 10 scrap sampler blocks. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. If you're new to my channel, I have tips, tricks, strategies, and stories to help you make the quilts that you want to make. One of the best ways to manage Mount Scrapmore is to have a couple of block patterns ready so we can continuously use up our scrap. Because we all know if we don't keep them under control, they have babies while we sleep. In my last video, one of the strategies we talked about was cutting your scraps up into two and a half inch and five inch strips. If you haven't seen my video on scrap management, I'm gonna put a connection right up here. So today's blocks are sampler blocks. They use consistent size pieces in an organized block. That means it's highly repeatable. And there are so many designs you can make using just two and a half and five inch strips. Okay, so the first one is a four patch and you're probably looking at me going, duh. I know this is an obvious one, but you probably all have a stack of these mini charms in your sewing room somewhere. So just keep a stack of them by your sewing machine and use them as leaders and enders. It's basically a bonus block that you can accumulate while you sew other projects. They can be totally random or you can play with lights and darks. <laughs> just press to the left and up and they go together nice and easy. This is my favorite block. It's made from two two and a half by four and a half inch strips. And it looks great scrappy. And when you have longer strips, it looks great in a two by two or a three by three pattern. The three by three block this is perfect for any leftover with the fabric strips, whether they be jelly rolls or binding strip. Just sew them together and then divide them into three. I've been taking one solid and one print and putting them together. Sew them all together, then cut three strips of four and a half inches. Then spin the center piece around and sew them all together. And take advantage of some English paper piecing scraps to make a fussy cut block. You might look at this block and just think that this is four four patches sewn together. And the difference is in the construction. This is made by sewing four strips two and a half inch by 10 inch together. And then we slice these into two and a half inch strips and then sew these together. Let's just pause here for a second and talk about value in scrappy blocks. And if you don't know what I mean about value when it refers to color, go watch my series on color theory. And I'll put a link to that series up here. For most of us, it would take a long time to accumulate enough fabric in one color in a range of tones, tint, and shades to make enough scrappy blocks to make a quilt. So it's a lot easier to do it with value. We can look at a block and identify where low, medium, and high value blocks should go. It can turn a muddy pattern into one where the eye can follow. In this postage stamp block, I put the highest value blocks along the diagonal. So when I'm making these strips, I'm actually making four different types. Follow this guide for ironing and your blocks will nest together nicely. Okay, the nine patch. So why make a nine patch when the four patch is so simple? Well, two reasons. The nine patch is sort of inherently scrappy. And often when we have scraps, we have more than just one block of them. This is a good place to use four at a time up. And the second reason is a nine patch has a center, which we can highlight or fussy cut, or even put a tinier block in the middle. These are the off cuts from my circus tent quilt. And don't forget to play with value in the layout. What should we call this one? Spot in the middle? And it's perfect for two and a half inch strips left over from a fat quarter or half a jelly roll strip. Cut two, two and a half inch by six and a half inch strips and then cut three, two and a half inch squares. You'll use two on this block and use one as a center for another block. And of course, 
fussy cut that center when you get the chance. The key here is you need enough contrast between the outside and the inside to make it interesting. You can do it with hue, you can do it with saturation, and you can do it with value. Here's an example of this quilt done by my Stitch and Chat partner, Susan Gray. It is done in these beautiful desaturated browns and grays. The cross. You need one two and a half by six and a half inch strip plus two two and a half inch squares. The other four squares can be all the same fabric or they can be in a, in a variety of fabrics as long as there's good contrast between that and the cross. You can alternate the value of the crosses and follow this ironing guide and they'll go together smoothly. The HST. Now I debated about putting this HST on the list. Yes, they're simple and you can combine it a number of different ways with your four patches, but I always need to trim my HSTs up. So making it fast might be an iffy claim. So making the five inch one isn't too bad, but the two and a half inch now, <laughs> You can make them, but they're not gonna be fast. Make sure you use my HST Buster from my video, Five Sewing Hacks with Masking Tape. I'll put a link up here to that. The main reason why I wanted to include it are all the amazing layout. This is just a simple Google search for scrappy HST quilts. And when you combine it with a four patch, things really begin to get interesting. Now, let me show you a trick with your five inch strips. When we make an HST, the regular way, just going across and sewing quarter of an inch from the line, we end up with these tails at the tips of our corners that are simply wasted fabric. In fact, three eighths of wasted fabric. So there's this ruler that you can buy for cutting your strip into HSTs without that little tip on it. But mine doesn't go to five inches. It does come in a larger size, but I need another ruler like I need a hole in the head. So I have made a template by grabbing another ruler and place it a half an inch along the line, line the HST ruler up along the bottom, draw a line and cut along the line. And I use this piece to make my template. And now we can quickly just go down this strip and cut out half square triangles. Now you ask me, why do we fuss with this method when we have a simpler method at hand? When we use the regular method, these finish at four inches. When we use the other method, they finish at four and a half. And why do we need these, you ask? Take any of the nine patches, the spot in the middle or the cross, then sew an HST to the top and the bottom of the block. Press, then sew an HST to the other sides. Trim the block up, and voila. We have blocks number eight, nine, and 10. I call the first one the chiclet, then we have the hug, and then we have the kiss. Now remember, if you're fussy cutting the center of the chiclet, you need to turn it on point. And the hugs and kiss block can be combined together to make a beautiful quilt. Oh my God, we're at 10 already. I have so many more to show you. So I'm gonna have to make another video. Remember, don't wait until your scrap pile is overwhelming. Choose two to five patterns, make an appointment with yourself on your calendar and let your blocks grow organically over time. So let me know in the comments below if you're going to try any of them. When you do, post a picture on Instagram with the hashtag scrap buster block. So you know the drill. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button down below. Click on that bell when you want to be notified when I make new videos. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Get It Done Quilts. So take care and I'll see you next time.